I got I got some hot topics I got to talk to you about. All right, so um, what I what I'd like to do I'd like to do this more on a frequent basis. It, it's May twelfth right now when I'm recording this, so we're gonna try to get this this maybe this little portion out into the world on LinkedIn or or Instagram or wherever the heck uh, else we put our videos. But I, I'm noticing uh, hot 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 topics and by hot topics I mean they're in the news or I'm getting flooded with questions in uh, my in the Milewalk Academy training system by people who are uh, have the package where they can get the online support or they're uh, they're answering um, uh, they're commenting on my YouTube channel and so there's three things I want to talk about the first one is um, the 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 news lately in the last week you're hearing things about uh, Facebook slash Meta uh, doing hiring freeze and or letting people go. <gasps> Heaven forbid that 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 could happen. You know, Netflix isn't doing well. Peloton. Oh my goodness, what's happening? And I want to make sure that you can differentiate the noise in the market from something that's surgical and specific to these particular companies and companies like them versus. What I, in nauseating detail, outlined for you in my video, the, the, the job market outlook 2022, maybe Stacy can drop that in the chat. I, re, I, I did a live show in March. We released a video in April, and I, it's 40 some odd minutes probably where I went into nauseating detail on why we are in the current situation that we are with inflation rising, prices right rising, wages increasing, and what's going to happen. I outlined what's going to happen, to whom it's going to happen, and the actions you should take specifically to make sure you're in order. I'm not going to revisit that lesson because I spent a lot of time preparing it for you, and it's out there in YouTube land for you to watch, and it's probably on my podcast. But make sure that you take that in because that's going to help you differentiate what I'm about to say. Just because Facebook decides to publicize it's going to be freezing uh, hiring is not cause for alarm. And Netflix and Peloton, like I said, just as an example, what you're seeing there is three you know, billionaire owners or whatever that for various reasons, their companies are going south. And I'm gonna give you my opinion of why those are in a minute. But I want you to know, it, from, a, from a trends perspective, we're all seeing the stock market go like this, right? What this is called is whiplash, all right? It's, it, it's going down. This is emotional reaction. It's going to go down. It's just, it's dipping right now, and that's called whiplash, all right? That's what you're seeing is a whiplash effect. I outlined all this in the, in the job market outlook video. Why, why is this happening? This is reaction. This is overreaction. This is investor overreaction. Okay, file that and separate that from what's actually happening in the employment market, which lags the stock market, you still have a bit of time to get these big, fat, juicy offers, and you should be. Now, why would somebody like Facebook uh, all of a sudden be freezing? That has nothing to do with the macroeconomic trends that you're seeing in the market. The reason Facebook is going through what Facebook is going through is because of the way the company is structured and how it's behaved. Let me give you a great example. I'm three people, me, Andy. I'm Andy LaCivita on Facebook somewhere that I never use. That's my personal page. The reason I don't use it is because I can't find anything I'm using. Facebook is sending me alerts all the time about stuff I don't want to see and videos I don't want to watch and ads that I don't care about and all this other stuff. Okay, I, I've stopped using it from a personal perspective because it's really hard to get around. From a business perspective, Andrew LaCivita, second person, I have a business profile. And it doesn't send my, my business posts to the people who follow my page. Okay, so that's not really great. And the advertising that I might want to do is so heinous to operate and so restrictive and not nearly as effective as they'd like to believe with costs rising drastically because of their greed that I as a business person don't want to use the platform. Okay, now Andy, Andy third guy, Andrew LaCivita third guy, runner of Mile Walk Academy, had a community group out there. But I was just trying to read the posts from the people in my community who I love and care about and want to support but I'm being bombarded 
by ads and Facebook watch and other things that I don't care about that make the platform so noisy and irritating to use that why do you think that that community platform that I just said, we took it off of Facebook. That's one of the reasons. I wanted better control. I wanted to structure it the way that I wanted. I didn't. I want people who want to go there proactively, look at it, collaborate with each other in an uninterrupted environment, in the safety of our own platform and, and the security of our own platform where they can share direct message, group chat, talk about the topics that we want to talk about without being you know, inundated with all this other crap. Guess what? I am th the triple threat and I see all the differences. People are getting off that platform in favor of other platforms. That's why they're going through what they're going through. Has nothing to do, you think people are not wanting to use social media? Right, what's happening with some of the other social platforms? So think about that, Netflix, different issue, right? Just because Netflix's revenue is going to, have, has anybody been on Netflix lately? I try to watch every imaginable show that I possibly can. I watch more TV than you probably would imagine. I read a ton. I work a ton. I need I need a little time where my wife and I could sit there and laugh or think the shows are cool and they don't come out with new shows. And you have fatigue. You have fee fatigue. I have I have Comcast cable. I'm not getting rid of that. Okay. I know it costs me whatever, but you know what? I got my internet. I got all this other stuff that I need. I'm not letting that go. But Hulu and all these other things that I also have bought, Paramount and whatever, are a fraction of the cost, just about as good. And people are getting tired of that. People are still gonna watch TV. Right? So that's it. They've got their own issue. They 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 were lazy, they fell asleep at the wheel. All right, because they were not getting up with the times as all these other streaming environments started to invade the market. And then you got the Pelotons of the world. They had bad press. Okay, I don't know about you. I go to the health club right, three times a week. I go there three times a week because the other four days of the week, I could either run outside, ride in my basement, strength train in my basement or whatever. But I still got to go to the pool. Why well, I get to go to the pool to do my swimming. The parking lot is filled. I got to wait for a swim lane. Why? People want to get back to that stuff. Right. And so so you got to think about this bad press combined with people, you know, wanting to get out of the house more now that they can. It, you're going to you're going to get hurt. So my point to all this is don't think there's some crazy shift in the market. No, what you're, what you're seeing is whiplash. Yes, I talked about the recession that's imminent. But but the stock market is always in advance of the employment market, which lags. The only issue that you need to worry about with the employment market is, is it going to be a jobless recovery or not? So I want you to be able to differentiate this. I've given you the answer on how to do that in the job market outlook video. That's hot topic number one. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that one. I'm going to go on to hot topic number two, which is ghosting. Guess what? Got a video on that too. The 14 different ways that you could be ghosted. Maybe Stacy can pop that one in the in the chat. I would like you, I hope, you would take the time to go and watch that to understand what ghosting is, why it occurs, how you can prevent it, and all that good stuff. But I want to talk about changes in that a, a, a lot of us are not, we're not really some of us are in my demographic, right? I'm about to be 56, you know, are, are, are just floored by the ghosting. And a lot of people in their early 20s are not so surprised by this. I want to talk about that. So I, as an executive recruiter, have placed over 600 people in my life. In 2007, okay, 15 years ago, I had the one and only person, Frank, I won't sell him out with his last name, not show up for their first day of, of employment, okay? Now, the, 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 the market and, and, and what has transpired in the, the attitude that employees and employers have toward each other has really changed. So I want you to think about, the, I want you to think about that stat. One in 600 and change didn't make it to their first day on the, on the job, and then there was one other person who crapped out in a week and one other person who crapped out in a month, okay? Those are like minuscule percentages. Now, part of that is my recruitment, being able to assess employers hiring the right people. But when I looked and I, I'd ask my employer clients, you know, do people not show up? Like, do people crap out and those kind of things? They said, well, 
you know, it, it happens, and, and I noticed it from what they would share with me as I would help support them in other other candidates that they'd hired, job candidates that they'd hired. But what's happened now, and we talked about ghosting, right? I went through all the details. But one of the things that I want you guys to realize is that we live in a different world today because the generate the younger professional generation, this is not a knock on them. It's, it's about what we're used to and what we've all been through. They've grown up with phones in their hands. They know what it's like to be ghosted, to not respond, no te- not to the texts or whatever. Nobody calls back. Nobody calls in in any way. And a lot of what's happening is as these indiv- these individuals in this generation have become professionals, a lot of the the folks in their twenties. Um, you know, they're, they're not showing up on their first day on the job, but it's not that big a deal to them because of what they've grown up with. This is not a knock on them. We're, I'm, I'm looking at the and, and analyzing what's happening. I have been reviewing statistics and surveys over the last week or so. There was an article, I think, in the journal the other day. Southwest Airlines, a major company, said they'd estimated between 15 to 20 percent of the people they hire don't show up on their first day. That's ghosting right? Maybe the reverse ghosting that you're talking about. But what happens? Employers are the same way. So you've got young professionals who are in the recruitment slots that are handling you, not so experienced, but also used to, I don't need to call that candidate back and let them know they didn't get the job, right? This is becoming common. So what is what is all of this saying? Well, I don't want you to be that person, but if you're wondering why the times have changed so greatly, right? It's a cyclical effect. It's nobody's fault. It's everybody's fault, right? Employers do it to candidates, do it to employers, do it to candidates, do it right. And it's, these are generational changes that occur as we go, right, from, from uh, generation to generation. And I think that has a lot to do with the ghosting practices. You can't just say, well, you know, employers just ghost people. Well, they didn't just start ghosting people, right? And they haven't always ghosted people to the extent that it's occurring right now, but they also have not been treated by new hires the way they are being treated. Could you imagine those stats if I would have told you that six, if uh, if we just round it down to 600 people, that 120 wouldn't show up to their first day on the job, right? Think about that. This is just some food for thought, but I would highly recommend that you go watch the ghosting video. Now, the last thing is a little bit shorter, but it's on resignation. I have a, a, a popular, I have two two videos on resignation on my YouTube channel. Stacy, can you can you pop in the long one uh, about the complete guide to resigning the eight steps? And I, I did a full fledged everything that you should do to resign properly. And then a while back, I have a resignation video where I was answering somebody's live office hours question where I just, I talked about resigning with class. I want to reiterate for all of the people that have been putting comments on my YouTube channel, remember, you resigned for you. And just because employers might not treat you uh, so well and you're upset, remember, it doesn't cost you a whole lot to resign properly. Give them a notice digital, written, hand it to them. I don't care. Give them a couple of weeks notice or whatever the appropriate amount of time is. But you've got to remember that you might think, well, geez, I don't really owe them anything, right? They were mean to me, right? Except that if you leave and you huff and you puff and you leave in a tizzy, remember, number one, uh, all those people you work with, they're part of your team, they're part of your network. Somewhere in the in the future, you're going to be interviewing at a company and they're going to be working at that company and they're not going to put a good reference in. But you also have to remember that your employer is going to be fielding a reference check in all likelihood. Not You might not give people at that employer as references, but when the when your potential employer, your new employer, does a background check, they go back to these employers. S- some of the organizations, they call these employers directly to verify it. They call into HR. They say, did so-and-so work there? And what is it going to sound like when I say, oh, yeah, she worked here? What do you mean, Andy? Well, she didn't leave on the greatest of terms. Why is that? Well, she dropped her notice and then ran out the building. Right, that this this is what I'm talking about. You have got to be thinking way ahead. And guess what? It doesn't take. It's like smiling. It smiling, right? Takes less 
muscles and energy than it does to frown, right? It's the same kind of thing with, um, with residing. Why not go out with some class, right? Breadcrumbs. Don't leave breadcrumbs in this world that you don't want. You don't want to be looking over your shoulder, right? So don't do that. You're better than that. All right, so those three topics, making sure you understand the market, what's going on in the market, what's, what's going to happen, Andy's job uh, market outlook, right, the full-fledged version. This is whiplash. You got noise. You got some companies that were greedy or fell asleep at the wheel or a combination of both right? You've got the ghosting issue and you got the resignation issue. Okay. Hope you enjoyed that one.